good morning, AFBC Church family. We welcome you in the name of the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made. We thank you and we welcome each and every one of you getting on on all of our streaming services, whether you're on Facebook Live, whether you're on YouTube, our AFBC TV, or even on our website. We welcome you. While you're at it, y'all go ahead and share. I know that y'all are joining now or whatever. I want you all to share this now. Share this. Subscribe to our YouTube. I know that these things are on the screen. And y'all just come on, join us, and we're going to have an amazing time in the Lord today. While you're doing that, I'm going to pray for us. Father, we say thank you. We love you. We magnify your name. Lord, we believe that this is going to be the day that, Lord, there's going to be maybe a song that was sung. Lord, that the word is going to just begin to permeate through the hearts of each and every person that gets on this live, that shares this, Lord God, and that watches this. So, God, we just ask, have your way in this place, Lord God, and we know that we will give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. Come on, praise team. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we
Serving Apex Family, these are your weekly announcements. Join Pastor and First Lady McLean for our weekly connection call on Fridays at 7.30 a.m. The dial-in number is 425-436-6379 and the access code is 355-445. Apex Family, thank you for your attention. These have been your weekly announcements. Amen, amen. It's time to give. It's time to give. One of our favorite uh, moments and opportunities to worship at our church. We are excited to be able to give on this Sunday. Understand at our church, if this is your first time, we have four primary ways to be able to give at Apex First Baptist. First, you can come to the church right now for the next 30 or, or so minutes, and you can come drop off your offering and your tithes to the church. If it doesn't work right now, maybe come on Wednesday from 5 to 7, and the deacons will be here, and they'll be able to greet you and receive your offering. If you can't do that, consider mailing your offering. Mail it in at Apex First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 64, Apex, North Carolina. Carolina 27502. Again, that's Apex First Baptist Church, a, uh, P.O. Box 64, uh, Apex, North Carolina 27502. And we can do it that way. If not, y'all can do one of the ones that I love to do. Just go online. Go to apexfbc.org forward slash give and you can give. You can even give to our Count Me In campaign. That has been a campaign that was started last year that has allowed us to be able to do so many great things and improvements, whether to our sound, our video, our audio and even to this stage and so many things around the church. So consider uh, giving to our Count Me In campaign. And lastly, you can literally pick up your phone. Come on, y'all pick it up right now. You can text Apex First. It's going to be on the screen. Text Apex First right now, and all the numbers, all the info will be on the screen, and you're able to text to give, and that's one of the best ways that we've been able to do. So we ask and we suggest and we encourage you all, give now. Amen, amen, amen. It's preaching time. It's preaching time. Listen, we are excited. We have an amazing word that's about to come forth from uh, literally the man, the myth, the legend. We are excited this morning. We are going to have none other than Reverend Anthony Brown. He is going to come and he is going to have an uh, amazing word this morning. And listen, we ask that you all receive him. Y'all sit back. I know that it's going to be a crazy sermon and a crazy message. Sit back and y'all receive the man of God now. Good morning, Apex First Baptist. It is time to hear a word from the Lord. If you would, gather your Bibles, gather your pads and your pens and pencils. And if you would, turn with me in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament chapter, chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I will be reading to you from the NIV version. NIV version. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So I just want you to just, just listen to the words of this pericope of Scripture. We are dealing with a lot of things in a pandemic and coming out of a pandemic, so we want to make sure that the Word of God is very relevant to you this morning. So if you would, use us, God, as you would. We are your people. You are our God. S Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instructions about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. If I go down to verse 13, verses 13 through 20, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Verse 16, people swear by someone greater than themselves. And on that oath, 
it confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary between the, behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Praise God for the reading of God's word. When we think about this scripture that is being read, and we see a lot of things that are going on around in this world today, we want to just lay some good foundational teaching here, and if God be permitting, he will allow us to do that. You see, spiritual maturity is a topic that many people try to avoid in their day-to-day -day attempts to grow or progress. Although we try to avoid to talk about it, many people have their own idea as to what steps are taking to grow or to mature. There is no trying to hide the fact that God, our loving God, wants his children to become mature sons and daughters of the Father. What are you trying to say, preacher? What are you trying to say? Mature sons of God move beyond the place of having faith in God and faith through God to a place of having the exact same faith of the Son of God. What does that mean? If we have faith, and if we act on that faith, it's one thing to have faith in God and through God. But it's another thing when we grasp hold to the faith of God and we think and believe as God. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if we are the men and women of God, we should be mature to act in the things of God. So when we think about doctrines, doctrines are something that we need to understand. Doctrines are what we call precepts, teachings that lay a foundation that we must inevitably live by. One thing that we need to know about doctrines, doctrines are the do's and don'ts. It's foundational. It's important for us to get a good rooted ground mentality as to how we should follow our Lord and our God. So, Jesus was our first example. We should be becoming like God through decisions to trust and follow the doctrines of God, which was a foundation laid by Christ himself. This is evident in the beginnings, in the book of Genesis, in the first chapter in verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. My brothers and sisters, when I read this text, if we are the born-again men and women of God, we have a commandment that God has just given to us that we should be able to subdue and be in dominion or control in our lives to the things that God has called us to do. I don't know about you, but God has a work that he wants to give to us. And if we're going to make this kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, we must know how to mature to be the men and women God called us to be. You see, we talked about doctrines. Those are the standards or the belief system that has been established by a leader. Or we call them a bodhisattva. The Bodhisattva is a savior type. He is the savior one. He was the one who sets the standard for us. In our case this morning, this would be Jesus himself. If a person trusts and follows this leader, it is possible for one to choose the same pathway or lifestyle. 
But if a person doubts, it is possible for that individual to have a strong sense of fellowship. However, in some defined period of time, the truth will be revealed whether you are a follower or not. You see, then uh, there's a question that comes up, brother. It says, what is it that stops us? Asa, what is it that prohibits us from maturing or progressing? I'm glad you asked, Reverend Thomas. The word doubt comes to mind. You see, there are many people who doubt their salvation. Many others doubt their security in Christ. To live with this kind of burden and insecurity leaves people weak and ineffective in their Christian walk. Thankfully, there is a word from God in this area. This entire chapter dwells on the hope of the Christian and the eternal security of the believer. You see, in Hebrews, I need to give some background information. The book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews was written to the Jewish people. And you would say, who was the writer? We don't know who the writer is. But more importantly, the writer wanted to get an encouraging message to the people, but also he wanted to get an enlightened message. It was a warning. Praise be unto the God. You see, we are taught here as Christians, that the Jewish people, when we look at the first uh, verse of Scripture that we read in Hebrews 6, verses, verses 1 through 6, there are six foundational doctrines that the children of his Hebrew always live by. The first being the repentance from acts that lead to death and the faith to God, instructions about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment, and it says, and God permitting, we will do this. You see, there are something that you need to understand about the Jewish people. The Jewish people back in these days, remember, these Jews have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. So if they accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, they will be considered the Messianic Jew. They believed in the Messiah. So the problem in the text and the tension here is that when you look at these Jews, there was a problem and a warning that the letter writer was trying to get them to see. Those six foundational doctrines. What is so peculiar about those? Well, back in Judaism, they had the very same six doctrines. Listen to me, Doc. When you look at what the Judaism people believe, they believe these six doctrines as well. We know that Jesus said he did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill the law. That means he wanted to take this doctrine to a different level. What are you trying to say? As immediately when these Jews converted to Christianity, if they had the same six doctrines, one would ask the question, well, then, what was the reason for me converting from Judaism to Christianity? I'm glad you asked that question. This was the same question that was asked by this writer who was addressing this letter to the Jewish people. You see, when you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis, when you understand what it means to live your life and follow the precepts of God, Sometimes, men and women, we get complacent in our lives. We take our eyes off of Jesus Christ. So, preacher, what are you trying to say? If I came out of Judaism and I've accepted Christ as my Lord and my Savior, now I'm at a road of choosing, do I stay a Christian or do I fall back into my old religion? Do I stay a Christian or will I remain and go back to being a Judaism? Well, the important thing that we need to know, the Bible says we have to make a choice. And so this is where this letter becomes much more of an encouragement to us when you move down into the scriptures. So when we think about this, we are taught here that Christians, we are to possess hope. In verse 18, 
The hope is not merely some fond wish or desire. Rather, it is a deep, settled confidence based squarely on the promises and the power of God. We are told that this is hope is based on two great unchangeable forces. The first being God's promise. What does that mean? He will keep his word. God cannot lie. The whole universe redounds upon him living his word and executing his word. Secondly, God, he committed an oath on himself. He was sworn by himself that what he promises will come to pass. You see, my brothers and sisters, in a court of law, men make an oath. So help me God, they say, to call God to witness that what they were about to say is the truth. Men swear by God because there is none greater. Therefore, if God is going to make an oath, we must swear by himself. Since there is none greater than himself, in other words, God stakes his own reputation and name on his ability to do what he said he is going to do. So if we are going to mature to be the men and women of God we're supposed to, we can trust God at his word. Having given us his personal assurance and our eternal security is based on himself. He now gives us three figures to prove that this hope is eternal, security, and reliable, steadfast, and sure. If you will allow me, allow me for these three times, three minutes, to give you great realities, three great realities that can literally put down to death your life and mine. The important thing to know is that we need to ask ourselves the question, don't let your doubt take you out. Don't let your doubt take you out. So the three realities that we must use today, first, we have to rely on the promises we have claimed. Those who have turned to Jesus have fled from refuge. The image here is in the ancient cities of refuge, detailed in Numbers and in Joshua. Across the river of Jordan, there are six cities, three on one side, three on the other side. It's important to understand that if someone who accidentally killed another human, according to the Jewish law, the dead man's next of kin was required to punish the murderer. Did you hear what I said? If you accidentally killed someone, the dead man's next of kin was required to search after to hurt or kill the person who killed his family member. However, if he was accidentally killed another, he could flee to one of the cities of refuge and there he would receive a fair trial. If the death was proven to be accidental, the killer could remain in the city of refuge, protected from the anger of the avenger of blood until the high priest died. And at that time, he was permitted to return to his own home without fear of retribution from the dead man's family. You see, that's why we have those cities of refuge. In the very same sense, Jesus is our city of refuge. We are guilty. For Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. We deserve to die. And we were being hunted down by the avenger of blood. For Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus. Psalms 9.17, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. We fled to Jesus, and in him we found protection from the penalty of our sins. For Romans 5 and 9 says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We are also secure in him forever. Hebrews, the seventh chapter and 25th verse says, Wherefore, he is able to also save them to the utmost that come unto him, seeing ever, ever that he liveth to make intercessions for them. 
when the accidental murderer fled to the city of refuge in Israel, he was merely claiming the promise of God. It was a matter of faith. In like manner, when we are sinners flee to Jesus, the refuge of our soul, we are merely taking God at his word. And he is ever faithful to keep the promise of salvation to all who will come to him. The second point that I want you to understand is that the place where we are anchored. You see, steadfast. Steadfast. Another of the anchor of the soul. If you are in Jesus, we need to learn to rejoice in that great security. Another interesting point is that to note that we are not anchored down, but we are anchored up. We are not tied to this world, but we are tied to that heavenly world. Philippians 3rd chapter and the 20th verse note also that we have not been anchored to a standstill, but we are ever moving toward the anchor point. We are ever headed home. Every minute is another minute closer to glory. So the important thing to understand is that there is work to be done. So when we are anchored to Jesus, he is the one who leads us into all men of righteousness to give the gospel message to anyone that will believe. The third and final point is the person who has gone before us. We're talking about Jesus. Here, Jesus is called the forerunner. This word literally means a scout. One who in advance to a place where the rest of us are to follow. Jesus ascended into the heaven with the promises, and he was fresh from his lips. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Here, the differences between Jesus and the Old Testament high priest is clear for us to see. The Old Testament priest, he entered behind the veil once a year and always was alone. No one could follow him into the Holy of Holies. Unlike Jesus, who entered into the Holy of Holies when he came into the heaven's gates, it was clear that when Jesus entered in the Holy of Holies, he said that his followers can come with him. The clear promise of God in regard to our security stands as a great anchor to the soul. You see, in heaven, he promises us one day that we would join him there. He went on ahead, but will receive us in his heaven later on. As our forerunner, Jesus himself accomplished great things on our behalf. He has gone on before to announce our future arrival in heaven. He has gone on before to take possessions of the glories of heaven on our behalf. Also, he has gone on before so that he can welcome us when we do arrive. And if Jesus is our forerunner, that means he has finished the race. That means we will finish the race as well. So my believers, keep believing. So my trusters, keep trusting. So my workers, keep working. Don't give up. That reminds me of Peter and John in the third chapter of Acts after the day of Pentecost when they were full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus and Peter and John was walking to the temple and they saw a man who was begging for alms at the door. He asked the question, look, I need some alms. Peter looked at the man with John. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. You see, after being empowered with the Holy Spirit, we are supposed to take the message to the gospel truth and in our God and truth, oh God. And when we do that, God will be edified. God will perform miracles that we can never perform by ourselves. You see, I think it's very important for us to understand. If we are to take this gospel message, if we are to be the men and women to claim dominion over the earth, if we are the men and women who are to bring change in this day and age coming out of a pandemic, we have to not doubt the word of God. So those three truths are very important. Maybe there is someone who is at the brinking edge where they just are doubting every day. Maybe you're in the balance. Maybe you don't know whether or not you want to go follow Jesus or you want to result back to your old life. 
if that be the case, I submit that Jesus Christ is the one who we need to talk to. He is the one is our anchor. The Bible says that if you shall confess your mouth that the Lord Jesus has been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And if that was you this morning and you have prayed that prayer, congratulations, you are now in the household of faith. Now there's work that needs to be done. But in order for you to do the work, you have to know how to mature. We have to follow the doctrines and the teachings of Jesus Christ. When we follow the doctrines of Jesus and teachings of Jesus Christ, we will never go wrong. We want to look at you out there, those of you who are looking by live, uh, live stream or Facebook. If you're looking by our uh, internet, our television channel. Maybe if you want to be a member of Apex First Baptist Church, we ask that you just come and join us. Uh, take this opportunity to send a text, send a note to someone and let them know you want to be a part of Apex First Baptist. One of the things I will share with you is that when you join Apex First Baptist, you will get great Bible teaching, but more importantly, you will get a leader who has been led of God to lead us into the future of doing kingdom work. And when we come in, we will be able to follow the precepts that God has given to us. Maybe there is something that has been said, hopefully, that you will take this in your heart and you will hide it so that you will grow and learn that maturity is just around the corner. My brothers and sisters, the word of God for the people of God. While may the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're absent, one from another, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we say amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace and have a blessed day. Thank you.